Hey, this is Daniel Grove, and in this video, I'm gonna do my best to help you understand lenses, to know how they work, which lenses to you for different types of photography, and how to know what's most important about a lens before you buy one. Well, let's get started. All right, before we get to talking about the different types of lenses, I wanna go over a few terms and vocabulary words that you need to understand in order to better understand lenses. You'll see these words and terms pop up a lot in other articles and videos and tutorials, so best to get them out of the way now and understand them early. All right, so the first term is aperture. The aperture is a mechanical opening inside of every lens that lets in light to your camera sensor. Now, the aperture can be a wide open hole or a larger opening, or it can stop down to a smaller opening to let in less light. As your aperture changes from wide to narrow or vice versa, your depth of field will also change. A wider aperture, which is a larger hole, such as f1.8, will not only let in a lot of light, but it'll also give you a very narrow depth of field. Whereas a small aperture hole or a large number like f16, very small hole, lets in less light, but your, de your depth of field is much deeper, much larger. So more of your scene will be in focus. So the next term is depth of field. That refers to the area in front of your lens that is in focus. Anything outside, say behind or in front of that depth of field range uh, is not going to be in focus. And in fact, the farther away it gets and the closer it gets to your camera, the more blurry it's gonna be. But everything that's inside that range of focus, which is your depth of field, will be, should be, sharp and in focus. If I'm shooting at f1.8 and my subject is very close to my lens, like a close up of their face, the depth of field is gonna be very narrow. It could be even one, uh, about a centimeter or less, depending on my settings and the distance going on. Um, whereas if something is farther away, the depth of field is going to get larger with distance uh, as it goes backwards away from the camera. So depth of field is that focus range that can be large or narrow, and it greatly affects your focus and the sharpness of your subject. Next term, and this is a big one, is focal length. So every lens has its own focal length. It may even have two like 16-35. Now technically, focal length is a measurement in millimeters uh, that has to do with the measurement inside the lens uh, to where the light hits the sensor. Now that's getting pretty technical. You don't really need to understand that part, but what you do need to understand is that focal length basically tells you how wide or narrow your field of view is going to be with that lens. For example, a 16 millimeter lens is very wide. I can capture a large scene in one photo without me having to be really far away. I can capture a lot of people or a lot of a, a landscape or a building interior in one shot easily with 16 millimeters. Whereas if I took that same shot with a 100 millimeter lens right here, it's not gonna look the same. 100 is a much uh, larger focal length and thus it's going to be essentially zoomed in very tight and not give me anything usable if I'm trying to get a large group or a landscape or an interior shot. So focal length tells you how wide or, you know, zoomed in your lens is going to be. Some lenses have a focal range, so they can go from 16 to 35, or they can go from 24 to 105. This one is 75 to 300. That's pretty far in zoom. That's a good sports and you know nature lens right there. So uh, focal range is very important, and you need to make sure and buy or rent the correct lens that has the right focal range for what you need. Don't buy a wide angle lens if you're doing a bunch of portraits because it's not gonna be ideal. And don't get a zoom lens if you're trying to shoot landscapes. <laughs> it's not gonna be great. You can still get good photos, not saying you can't do that, and there's always exceptions to these rules, but generally, you wanna stick with uh, you know, a telephoto for portraits and a wide angle for landscapes or events. All right, next term is prime. A prime lens is one that does not zoom, such as my 50 millimeter, my 100, and my 20. I can't zoom in or out. If I need to get a larger shot or if I'm in too close to my subject, guess what I have to do? I have to zoom with my feet. I've got to take some steps back or move closer to my subject to reframe or recompose my photo to get it how I need to be. So prime lenses are great because they generally have a better optical quality because there's less pieces of glass inside and those pieces of glass are not moving except for the focus pieces of glass Everything else is stationary, which is good. A zoom lens, however, has a lot of moving pieces of glass. They have to readjust and recalibrate based on the distance and the focal length, yada, yada, yada. So all that to say, prime lenses are generally better 
Uh, again, a few exceptions, <laughs> but if you want a good, uh, good focal optical quality, go with prime lenses. They can also shoot uh, wider open generally, such as f1.8, f2.8 is very popular. There's also some very nice ones that can go to f1.2 uh, and 1.4. So because the glass is simpler inside, mechanically and physically, it's able to get a larger aperture and uh, get gather in more light and also get a narrower depth of field. Next term is one that I think I invented. I'm not sure if it's actually a real term, but it's variable aperture lens. A variable aperture lens means the aperture is gonna vary based on your zoom range. So th this one, for example, if I'm shooting at 75 millimeters, it's f4, but as I zoom in, the aperture inside will change on its own, whether I like it or not, it will stop down to f5.6. Similar with this one, if I'm shooting at 24 millimeters, it's f4, but as I zoom into 105 millimeters, now that aperture changes or varies to f7.1, not great. If you're outside, it's fine. You can get away with it if you have enough available light, but if you're shooting indoors, uh, you know, if you want that shallow depth of field and that really good blurry look, not a good lens to have. So beware of variable aperture lenses because if you're shooting in manual, you'll be losing light. Your, your exposure will go down as you zoom in and it'll go up as you zoom out. Uh, you can you know, compromise and you know, bounce that with other settings, but uh, just be aware of those. Uh, another thing I love about prime lenses is the aperture doesn't change because you can't zoom. <laughs> so I like that about prime lenses. All right, so that's it for terminology. Let's talk about the different categories of lenses uh, that I have here. Uh, there is generally about five or six different categories of lenses. The first one is ultra wide. Pretty self-explanatory, ultra wide lenses are ultra wide. Like you can get 180 degrees or more of your scene in front of your lens captured into your photo sensor. And that's pretty cool. I saw recently a lens that's a nine millimeter lens, nine. It's a very small number in lens terms. And that is a super ultra, super duper wide lens. Uh, I don't know what practical application that has other than looking cool <laughs> and seeing the sky and your feet at the same time. But there's that. Um, ultra wide is generally from, I guess, one up to maybe 16 millimeters range. The next lens range starting at 16 and going to about 35 is the wide angle lens. I have two of those. I have a 16 to 35 f2.8, I love this lens, and a 20 millimeter 2.8. I bought this guy because this one has some, uh, some optical damage in it that's kind of causing some haziness. Uh, it's pretty old and I dropped it, so oops. <laughs> so I got this and I'm pretty happy with it. 20 millimeters is a nice medium range for my wide angle range and I use it pretty often. The next category of lenses is standard telephoto lenses. So standard is kind of in the middle uh, I'd say 50 millimeters is like the perfect standard telephoto lens. 50 is right in the middle of everything. It's a really good range for a lot of different types of photography. Portraits, macros, product photography, event photography, action shots, you name it. 50 millimeter can do it unless you need to back up more or zoom in closer. Then you're gonna be out of luck and you're gonna need to invest in one of these guys. But 50 is a great starting point. I tell every photographer, please, for the love of all everything photography, buy a 50 millimeter lens. They're only like $100. Uh, Yang Nu has one for $50. I don't know if I'd want that lens. <laughs> it's probably not great, you know, build quality or glass quality, but hey, if you're not making money off your photos and you want to buy a decent lens to up, up your quality, get, get the Yang Nu of 50 millimeter, but uh, better than that, get the, the name brand one, the Nikon or the Canon 50 millimeter 1.8 is awesome. Uh, I really enjoy it. I use it for everything. It's pretty much a starting lens for every photo shoot. Okay, next category of lenses is the telephoto lens which this definitely qualifies as that. This is a 100 millimeter lens. Telephoto, I would say is anywhere from the 85 millimeter range up to like 135 or even 200 millimeter range. That is telephoto range. And that means you can see something from far away. Telephoto, far away photo, right? We're gathering light from a far away distance and we're making that scene fill up our whole you know, photo sensor. So uh, telephoto are good for events, for macros, for portraits. We'll get into that later. Um, also, this lens is a macro lens too, which means I can focus very close to this last piece of glass. I can put something I think one inch or two inches away from the end of the lens and still have a sharp focus. And that's awesome because I can take sweep, super epic photos of wedding rings, you know, eyeballs, bugs, flowers, details at weddings, and you name it. It's really fun to get up close to things and blow it up. That's what macro means. Macro means large. So a macro lens takes something that is actually in the real world small and it makes it look large because it's filling up your entire photo with that thing. So this is a telephoto uh, macro lens. <laughs> the last category of lenses is zoom lenses. 
Now this is not a great one because this is a cheap kit lens from like 12 years ago, but this is a 75 to a 300. And uh, that's why I call it a zoom lens because it can zoom way in. 300 is pretty close. And uh, these are great for event, for nature photography, you know, National Geographic, they use crazy zoom lenses like 600, probably even like 1200. I don't even know if they make it that high, but if they do, they have it. <laughs> and uh, zoom lenses are great for getting in close. Now, if you're using a zoom lens, uh, you are going to need a tripod or a monopod or something to stabilize your shot because the closer in you get, the more any type of movement is magnified. You know that your heartbeat shakes your camera? It does. You don't notice it with these lenses because you're very wide and everything is very large. When you're zoomed in super close to stuff, say something that's like 100 or 200 feet away, you're going to see that shakiness really, really strongly. It's like a sniper, right? You snipers get on the ground and stabilize their gun because they have to, to keep it straight. A lens is no different. When you're zoomed in that close, there's a lot of shake. A lot of things are being magnified and amplified with the motion of the lens. So get image stabilization <laughs> on your camera and on your lens and get a tripod or a monopod to help you out with that. All right, next, let's talk about the anatomy of the basic lens. I'm gonna use this one right here because I've got the rear cap on. So starting at the very back of the lens is the rear cap, right? Protects the glass inside. The silver metal piece is the camera mount. That's where it connects to the camera. And you'll see some little copper, or I don't know what these are, uh, gold uh, contacts. Those are for the electrical circuits in the camera to communicate to and from the lens. That's how your lens knows uh, if you're in focus. That's how it controls the focus motor. And it even tells the camera what lens you're using. And that information is stored in your image file. So uh, that's the back end of the lens. Next up, we've got the zoom ring, which allows you to zoom in and out of your scene. If your lens zooms, a prime lens, remember, prime lenses do not zoom. This one does. Uh, next, we've got the autofocus switch. AF means autofocus is on. MF means manual focus uh, and autofocus is off. So MF means I need to turn this focus ring myself to get the image in focus. And of course, AF means it will use the little tiny motor inside the lens and it will focus and do its best to calculate a sharp image, right? So that is what autofocus is. Uh, and of course, we said here it is the focus ring, which allows me to focus if I'm in manual mode. And at the very end of the lens, we have a thread. If you look on the inside of the rim of your camera lens, pretty much all lenses have a thread there, which allows me to screw on filters of different types, um, such as circular polarizer filters, UV protection filters, even just glass protection filters that keep dust and glass and you know impacts from breaking my lens. You can just get a protection filter if you want. Now you do get what you pay for with filters, uh, so be careful. You are adding more glass in front of your glass, so make sure it's high quality glass before you, before you buy it and put it on. And you do need to make sure it's the right size filter to fit your lens. We'll get to that in just a minute. So that's the general anatomy of most lenses. They all pretty much look the same. Some lenses have a stabilizer switch or IS image stabilization switch here like this one does. If I have it on, there's a little motorized piece of glass that can actually move inside this lens to stabilize any motion or jittery or shakiness that I have. It's going to counteract that and keep the image mostly stable. Now it can only do so much, but small bumps and jitters, it can, I, I believe it should do a pretty good job at counteracting those um, and you can turn that on or off. Okay, let's move on to understanding the lenses that we have. So if you look on the front end of the lens, you'll see some letters and numbers and stuff uh, basically printed on the rim. It's either on the front or along the edge on the outside of the lens there. And it will tell you everything you need to know about this lens. So I'm gonna look at this one right here. This is Canon Zoom Lens. Zoom is used very loosely, of course, but it does zoom from 16 to 35. Next is EF. That means it is made for full frame Canon cameras that have an EF mount which all the cameras have an EF mount going back to, I don't know, like the early 2000s at least, maybe even the 90s. Um, EFS is uh, compatible, but it is for a crop sensor. So this is an EF lens made for a full frame, which uh, previously had a Canon 60, and that's full frame. Okay, uh, now this lens is an RF lens, which is made for the new mirrorless cameras, and this connects to the RF mount on the, the Canon R6 and R5. And moving on, we've got the focal range here, 16 to 35 millimeter and one 2.8. 2.8 means this is the aperture all across the range. Whereas, like I said earlier, this one changes and this one changes as well. The aperture will change as you zoom in and out. Uh, next, we've got L. That means uh, this, red, this red line around the edge. It's an L series lens, which means it's a high quality lens. Also a high quality price tag, <laughs> pretty big. I got super lucky. I got this and this together half price from an old dude who was retiring. It was a score. And that guy was happy to sell it to me because he liked me. So I got a really sweet deal on these guys. Um, last part here is USM. That refers to the focusing motor. I think it's an ultrasonic motor. 
Um, this one is STM, I forget what that means, but static something, I don't know. But it just refers to the type of focus motor. I don't really know why that's on the lens, doesn't really apply to, you know, we don't need to know what's inside the lens uh, necessarily. So that's how do you read your lens and it's always gonna be on the front end or around the, the end rim of your camera lens. Uh, and that has all the information about the lens you need to know. All right, so I get this question a lot. Daniel, what lenses do you use when you're on set? What are you shooting with? So I use three basic lenses at all times when I'm on a location photo shoot. I have my other lenses in my bag or in my car, but on me, literally in lens patches on my waist, I have three lenses with me. That is the 20 millimeter lens right here. I've got the 50 millimeter lens here and my 100 millimeter macro telephoto lens right there. I love these lenses because they are, they cover a very large range, right? They cover everything from wide angle stuff to details and far away stuff. And that's generally all that I need for weddings and portrait sessions. So if I want to capture a large scene or I want that distorted, you know, warped look, I'm going to go with my 20 millimeter lens. If I want to get in close or see someone far away, I'm going with a 100 millimeter. Uh, the 100 millimeter lens is also great because it has a high amount of compression. I used that word earlier and I promised I'd come back to it. So here I am, full circle. Compression uh, means you, your scene in front of your lens, let's say your landscape or your cityscape, is going to be compressed in almost three dimensions towards the lens. What I mean by that is an object that is far away is going to seem closer if you have a high compression lens. If I'm shooting with 200 or even 300, it's gonna really be flattened in a three dimensional way. It's gonna be flattened towards the camera sensor and give us a more pleasing look, especially for you know people portraiture, glamour shots and professional headshots, things like that. You want high compression. That's why the 85 millimeter is so popular and the 70 to 200 is very popular because at 200, man, it is just so compressed, it looks beautiful. It's hard to take a bad photo at 200 millimeter f2.8. It's a glorious lens, I've rented it and I loved it. Um, that's my dream lens, I hope to buy that one day soon. Uh, but for now, I gotta stick with my 100 and it does its job. So compression is good for portraits, um, the opposite end of the focal range, you do not have compression. Widening lenses have the opposite of compression, which I guess you could say is uh, image warping or image distortion, and you're gonna get things that are far away to look farther away. It's like, whoop, stretches that away, and if there's anything close to the lens, whoo, it stretches it towards the lens. So you get this like double stretchiness of your scene and your subject too, which is where it gets really weird. If you're doing people portraits, try not to use wide-angle lenses. Unless you're using it for a specific purpose, you're going for a dramatic, creepy or comical look, don't use wide angle lenses because it's not very flattering. If you're up close to someone, especially you can really see it, their head's gonna be like a bubble head, their nose is gonna be really close to the lens, their shoulders and their ears are gonna be really far back, it's just not natural. And the wider you get, the worse it is. Uh, there's a really cool visual, I'll see if I can find one for this video, but it's called the vertigo effect. And in the movie world, if a camera, say a movie camera, right, shooting video, is moving away from a subject, but zooming in at the same speed, well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was educational and helped clear up some confusion about how lenses work, what all these numbers and phrases mean. And I hope that next time when you're looking to buy a lens, you actually know what you're looking for now. Or if you're using what you already have, you can better take advantage of what you own currently and get the most out of your lens that you can. Well, thanks for watching and I hope you have a great week.